Turn it up, turn it up, turn it up, turn it up. That three true unnerving camping horror stories. Now, when it comes to camping, <clears throat> when it comes to camping, I'm not your man. I'm not your guy that's going to go camping just anywhere and, and, and you know, is adventurous in that way. Only because there's so many creepy stuff that happens and, and you got to be careful out here. But would I go camping? Under certain under certain circumstances, you know what I mean. I wouldn't go to like a national park where it's like mad miles of of woods, and, and just go there with three guys or whatever. Like it it really depends on location for me, and it and it depends on who I'm with and how many I'm with. You know what I mean. Me and my best friend, who I'll call James for privacy, were down in Oklahoma for a camping trip together almost ten years ago now. We lived further north, but would go to different nearby states on weekend camping trips whenever we had the chance. This was just another trip, where we found a somewhat uncharted place to go, and we planned on staying for a night or two before heading home. We had been doing this for most of our lives at this point, and grew up hiking and camping all the time. Both of us enjoyed making our own trails and finding relatively unexplored areas to stay. That being said, we should have been more careful. It was our first night staying there. We had hiked out four hours from where we parked the truck, which was already deep into the forest on a poorly made path. Along the hike, we found a destroyed and abandoned structure made of wood and mud with an overgrown trail leading to it. It was a pretty cool find, and we thought it might have belonged to someone years ago. Something strange about it though was that it looked like it had been burned down with char all around the wood. Oh wow. We passed it and continued until we found the very small lake. Then we set up our campsite along the tree line up the hill from the beach. From the beach? We made a fire pit and even dragged some small logs over to sit on. Then talked for hours while enjoying the scenery. Once full darkness settled in, we decided it best to let the campfire die out, then go to bed for the night. We talked a bit more while the fire slowly got smaller and dimmer until James stopped in the middle of his sentence and went silent. James? James, what you, like, James, come on, you, hello? You awake? You, you sleeping? You just can't go silent on me, James. It's too dark for that. I said his name and looked up, seeing him looking behind me. He told me to be quiet. Then I turned and looked behind me, seeing nothing. What did you see? Hey, I yo, asked, shut up, bro. A little he said be quiet shaken by the way he was acting I don't know he responded looking around he was starting to make me uncomfortable which was not a usual feeling I got around him if I'm being honest he was usually the one that didn't scare easily the fire mm. continued to get softer I'm not gonna lie <clears throat> at least well I don't know if everybody had that one friend but there's that one friend that don't really get scared a lot. And that's like. A non-believer of like. Like you know like. Almost the paranormal I would say. Like oh there's a ghost in here. I saw something move. But like that one friend that don't get scared. And, and it's like always logical. Oh that was just because of the. You know the electrical thing. Uh, it flickered the lights whatever. Or like like they never believe. Something scary happened. You know and it never phased. But if he was that type of friend. He got faced. Oh, I'll be scared too. You know what I mean? Making the forest around us darker. James grabbed a few sticks beside him and tossed them in, keeping the flame up a bit longer. Not long after that, James locked his eyes over my shoulder again. What's going on, man? You're starting to freak me out. He stayed silent for a second, then spoke. I think there's someone watching us. I turned to look behind me again, but this time I saw something too. A small person partially crouched down next to a tree, staring in our direction. I turned back oh to face Lord. James, oh and a Lord. few yards behind him, I saw another person standing behind a tree. Oh! I felt a sense of shock and fear, 
like this was some sick nightmare I was living in. Oh lord! James felt it too. I could see it in his eyes. As we both looked around and noticed more and more people standing and running between the trees around us. Lord Father God! Yo! Oh, James! James and them, bro! Oh my goodness! How they gonna... No, 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 that's crazy. What do you mean, people running? Oh, y'all about to get. Oh my gosh. That is that. Be, being in that situation, bro, I don't know what I would do, but I know I'd be super nervous and like thinking about like what, what the next move could be because that is just horrifying. What made it even more creepy and fear-inducing was you almost couldn't even hear them moving, like their footsteps didn't exist. That is crazy! We both stood up and looked around, watching these 10 to 15 unknown people surround us. 10 to 15? James called out, asking what they wanted, but they didn't respond. I held my hunting knife, but it didn't make me feel any safer. Nah, bro. Then, a few of them started making their way closer. Oh. But them becoming more visible in the faint light, they were holding long sticks, likely some sort of hunting spears, oh and were gosh. barely clothed. Seeing these oh, it's a tribe. Them, they looked angry and feral. James grabbed my arm and started pulling me back. We backed up slowly and grabbed our bags, then moved away from them and into the other side of the trees, where it seemed none of them were anymore. As we slowly backed away checking our surroundings often. The whole group seemed to be more interested in our camp spot than they were in us. We walked as far as we could in the general direction we came, then found a small place to hide for the rest of the night, though neither of us were able to sleep. In the morning, we could see smoke coming up from around the area where we had our tents set up. We assumed that that was them burning the tents. And it also came across our minds that they may have been the ones to burn the abandoned structure that we had seen as well. We started back for the truck, then drove straight home. At the time, research wasn't the easiest thing to do, so we kind of just left it as a horrifying experience that we may never understand. But recently we've gotten some answers. James found out that there are actually tribes that live not far from civil- just like I said, a tribe. I, that's what I was thinking. Because spears, hunting spears, it probably was a tribe. And the reason why they couldn't be heard, because <clears throat> that's how they hunt. They got to be very stealthy, because that's how they live healthy. So, um, it's not it's not as terrifying now, you know, but it still would be in the moment. Civilization in many territories around the country. Most often, they do not like any outsiders or unknown people traveling or living in their territory. There are stories of them attacking campers or burning their campsite to force them away. Given these possible actions, I think James and I actually got lucky with our encounter. Nowadays, we do a lot more research in the areas we plan to explore, making sure that the uncharted territories we camp in don't belong to someone else. Yep, exactly. You don't want to go to places where you might get stabbed. Jim Vaughn. I'm a 29 year old male and was out last year in northern Washington for a solo vacation. None of my friends enjoy camping at all, though I probably wouldn't want to be out camping with them all the time, even if they did. Very it was nice something treats. I've been doing alone all my life, okay. and I found it to be my way of enjoying life, stress and worry free. Washington was one of my favorite camping states, as it had tons of forest areas and mountains and was overall just an amazing state to be in. For this trip, I decided on a three-day, two-night camping trail. Basically, I would hike during the day, then camp at night, and repeat that over the course of the trail. The first day and night went well, nothing significant at all. I hiked a good portion of the path, well, that's a good shot. camp. Hold on, let's look at this shot real quick. That's a good shot. That is a nice shot. Off the side. I woke up early in the morning, right at sunrise, and crawled out of my small tent. I started repacking everything I had taken out, 
then started pulling the rods from the tent and folding it up. As I did this though, I noticed the grass behind the tent was pushed down. Walking up to it, it was a footprint. I looked at it for a second, then looked up and around at the trees. It had clearly been made recently, most likely last night while I was sleeping. Oh boy. Not seeing anyone, I looked back down and started following the prints. They were pretty well defined prints, and they led straight to the path. It was confusing, especially since I was on a camping trail, and my campsite was a good distance away from the main path. From the tracks though, whoever it was seemed to just walk away after noticing my tent. After packing my tent, I did a quick perimeter check around the site to make sure there were no other footprints, then got back on the trail and continued along. Hold on. He's by himself. Here we go. <clears throat> Here we go. He said, yeah, that's crazy. I would have peed my pants. Oh my gosh, I would have too. Most of the trail was beaten dirt or gravel, so all footprints showed up well. In the moment. Strangely though, there were no footprints all the way along the trail as I walked the second half. I wondered where that person could have gone, knowing this was really just a one-way trail. After a while though, I had forgotten about it and was just letting my mind wander to other things. This portion of the hike had amazing views, so I took my time and just took in the nature around me. Eventually the sun started setting though, and I had to set up camp again. I chose to go deeper into the forest this time, hoping no one would pay me a visit like they had the previous night. Once I got the tent set up, I made a small fire pit and sat on the ground next to it. Watching the sunset by a campfire is one of the most calming things, it really brings your mind to a better place. But that didn't last for long. Once the sun was almost fully set, I heard something walking towards me from the trees behind oh, the tent. Oh lord, here we go. Here we are, they my were slow, gosh. Soft footsteps, and the closer they came, the more recognizable they were as a human's footsteps. I quickly grabbed my bag and pulled out my heavy flashlight, along with my handgun. Okay, okay. Shining a beam of light into the dark. You got the forest, gun? I like that. Footsteps stopped. I moved the light around, scanning the whole area. For yeah. For 30 minutes, I was standing by the fire, looking in every direction. I was the, terrified. The heck? I never heard the steps departing, which made me really scared and nervous that someone was watching me still. The camouflage is A1. That camouflage must be A1. Are you crazy? You heard the steps, you got your gadgets, and you came out and you didn't see nobody? Bro, that camouflage is outrageous, bro. That is that is, that is terrifying because they still could be watching, like he said. What? I can't believe this. I didn't know what to do. Bro, I don't know I what was to do alone either. and helpless, with nowhere to go for safety. Nobody to watch your back either. I thought about going back to the path, but I was too terrified to go away from the campsite while it was so dark outside. I decided it had been long enough though, and backed into the tent. I tried to come up with every possible explanation of what it could have been, just to get myself to calm down. I only lasted a couple minutes in the tent though before I got really panicked and paranoid due to not being able to see around me. I unzipped the tent and stepped out, and before I could even turn on my flashlight, oh. heavy footsteps sprinted away towards the forest, coming right from the back of my tent. I turned around and frantically turned on the light, seeing nothing but footprints in the dirt and grass. I was breathing heavily, and my heart was racing as I what? stood by the campfire and stared at the trees in silence. I sat by the campfire with my gun in hand for the rest of the night. I flinched at every small sound, but eventually the sun came up and I felt a sense of safety. Looking at my tent in the sunlight, there were footprints again right behind it where I had heard the footsteps. I don't know how I didn't hear them walking up to the tent, what but the? I knew I needed to go. Bro, I packed everything up and finished the hike before the sun went down. I have no idea who was there, why they were watching me, or what they wanted. That is scary, bro. <clears throat> See? And this is exactly why, <clears throat> this is exactly why, guys, you don't want to do stuff like this by yourself. 
You want to have multiple people. I'm talking about multi on multi. You know what I mean? I would rather go with a whole team. <laughs> I would go with a whole team rather than just a, a small squadron. Because, bro, the more people, the more people, the better. He had nobody getting his back. He could have got zapped. He could have got zapped, bro. He could have got laid out to the... Bro, this is exactly why I don't do stuff like this. Because of situations like this. Good thing he had his gun. I'm not gonna lie. He was he, he was strapped. He was he was ready. But with nobody guarding your back in the dark, you could easily get shanked. You know what I mean? It, it's not that hard. It's, it's so many different angles that you can get got from. So it's it's like ah, but it's like ah, you know. Finally, somebody is strapped. Yeah, finally somebody is. Sky. It's everything you wish for. Your site traffic. All right. My husband and I took a road trip across the Pacific Northwest a few years back. The trip itself was two weeks, going from Tahoe City, California to Olympia, Washington. It was spring and we were super excited because we loved the rain. We lived in Arizona for most of our life, so when we moved to California for my husband's new job, we wanted to go on a trip and experience something besides desert. We drove a new Mar Bay Star, which is an RV, and for its time it was really nice. We stopped at an RV park in Upper Oregon, where we planned to stay for a few days because Oregon happens to be one of my favorite states. It was really late, and my husband was showering while I was making grilled cheese when I mm. heard a knock at the door. The grilled cheese. We've stayed at a handful of RV parks, and this kind of thing has never happened. Not unless you talk with your neighbors beforehand and become friendly. But we had arrived only half an hour ago, and didn't talk or introduce ourselves to anyone. I peeked out the curtain, and didn't see anyone. Huh? Ten or fifteen minutes go by, and I hear another knock. I peeked out the curtain again, and again, I didn't see anyone. Look at those eyes! I hear the shower turn off, and I go to knock on the bathroom door to ask my husband to check outside. But as I'm right outside the door, I see a light shining through a window that's in our bedroom. I told my husband through the door about what was happening, and he quickly got dressed and headed outside with a bat. He did a perimeter check and said he didn't see anything. Look at those eyes in the, in the, in the, in the dark. to a different spot, a good amount away from where we originally were. We sat down on the couch to watch a movie and eat our grilled cheese. My husband fell asleep after a while and I started to clean up. I was washing dishes when I heard the door handle to the RV move as if someone were trying to get in. I kind of froze and then it stopped. I woke my husband up and he checked outside the door and again there was nothing. The park the we were at wasn't the biggest, so there weren't many more spots we could move to, but we did anyways. We were both incredibly tired at this point, and going to another park wasn't an option. We parked as close to the exit as possible, and everything seemed to be okay. My husband was about to pass out, and my gummy I had taken two hours ago had kicked in, and all I wanted to do was sleep. We kept the kitchen light on and the TV on low volume as a sort of deterrent and went to bed. I was woken up by my husband tapping me aggressively. I opened my eyes to see him sitting on my side of the bed. Apparently he had heard some loud noises outside and when he peeked out the window, he saw two guys with what looked like knives in their hands trying to pry open the front door. He had called the police and they'd be here soon. I got dressed and we waited, listening to the two men outside still scratching and prying at the front door. A few That's minutes of crazy. this goes by, and we can hear them getting more and more frustrated as time went on. But then, the noises suddenly stopped. It was silent for another few minutes before the police finally pulled up, but the guys were nowhere to be found. The police said they'd ask around but obviously nothing ever came of it. Another camper had a similar thing happen to them. It was also one of the only other nicer looking RVs in the park, so I'm pretty sure we were scouted. 
We left around 7 a.m. after the police were done taking reports. Nothing was taken or significantly damaged, so it didn't affect us that much, but it was still a very scary experience. We wound up at a different RV park with better views and added an extra lazy day to our trip. I'm very thankful that our RV had a tight lock on it. Seeing as how there's no way they couldn't have known we were inside, tells me that they weren't just looking to rob us. And if that lock had broke, I most likely wouldn't be here today. Oh boy. Oh, it's over? Hey man, that one right there, <clears throat> you know, wasn't as crazy. Well, no, no, that, that, that situation was crazy. But I'm just saying, like, um, as far as the, cause, cause they were in the house, you know what I mean? So they could see, they could prepare, they could like defend themselves a little better. But when it comes to that one where he's in a tent, that guy, I think that situation, that situation, man, out of the two, like the ones with the, with the tribe and then, and then the one that was camping by himself, probably I would say. Man, I don't know because on the one hand, even though you were with somebody like with the tribe one, you st you, like you still saw a lot of them. So that's like okay, we're we're definitely gonna lose. But then the one where the guy was camping by himself with the gun, you don't see anybody, but you see but you see evidence that they were around, but you still don't see them. That's scary. That's like okay, like whoever this is, is it could easily kill me at any moment because they're stealthy. They're playing real stealthy, hundred <laughs> percent. So I don't, I don't know. I probably, I probably might say the one that's alone because you don't have anybody. I probably say that one, cause, cause you don't have anybody there, and so whatever you're going through, nobody else knows apart from you, and you can get got from any angle. So yeah, I, I have to go with that one, definitely.